and welcome to Knit Bits. I am Lois with Aussie Bozzy Knit Designs and I'm coming to you today. We're starting a new series. This one is about cast on methods. And so we're going to be looking at what purpose cast on methods serve. Like, are they just to put yarn on knitting needles so that we can knit? We're gonna be talking about the different methods and how you can substitute cast ons if you want to. And why is it that some patterns don't tell you what cast on method to use? Those are the kinds of questions that we'll be looking at over the coming weeks. Before we get into all of that, I did want to take a moment to tell you that if you like this video, would you please be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This is the best way for you to be alerted anytime I have some new content. If you like knit information coming to you one bite size at a time, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss an episode. So if you're new to knitting, then you may not even be aware that there are different cast on methods. I know that's how it was for me until one day I was knitting from a pattern that said to use a stretchy cast on. A quick Google search was just terrible because honestly, there isn't a cast on method called stretchy cast on. Rather, there's a bunch of different cast on methods you could use that are stretchy. But I didn't know that as a beginner. And so seeing that, I was like looking, but which one is stretchy? Which one is stretchy? Many of them are stretchy, right? Stretchy. There are a number of cast on methods that are in fact stretchy and categorized as stretchy. And that's the kind of information we wanna be taking a look at over the coming weeks. When I started Googling about cast on methods, that's actually what shoved me down the rabbit hole of knit knowledge, right? I was a new knitter and I didn't know that there were many cast on methods until I started Googling. And so I started listening to podcasts. And one of the podcasts that I listened to was by Knit Picks. And they had some knitters on that work there and they were talking about their favorite knitting books. One of them mentioned Cast On, Bind Off by Leslie Ann Bestor. And this was the book that they said they liked the most. So I ordered it. And I love it, guys. I'm not affiliated or sponsored. This is an advertisement for the book. But if you are interested in cast on information, you do like photo tutorials. This book is excellent. It has, I think, 54 different cast on and find off methods, beautifully photographed, excellent instructions. And the best part for me is that this book lays completely flat because it has a spiral binding but it doesn't look like a spiral bound book. And so it gives the appearance of a regular, you know, hardback book, but then it's actually spiral bound. So it can lay flat while you're trying to work through the tutorials. And that makes it a little extra special in my opinion. Over the coming weeks, we will be looking more and more at the different cast on methods and how they can be used, what their purpose is, how you can substitute them if you want to, and how you can maybe put in a different cast on method if you wanna bring your own flair to a knitting pattern. It's gonna be great. I am not anticipating doing a lot of cast on tutorials. However, if there's a cast on method that you would like me to demonstrate, I'd love to know that. Be sure to comment what that cast on method is and I will make a tutorial for you. That's going to be it for today. So again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.